how in the heck do you make this a robot in disguise out in the open when it's so freaking huge? What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex. You and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is just the web series we're talking about Transformers last night. This is episode number 108, and I want to say happy birthday to Hero Brian Fun777, Optimus Wolf, Cool RT1256, and Lelis Gonzalez. Happy birthday to all y'all. Hope you have a good one. Thank you for being part of the Raging Nation. Now, in this episode, we are going to talk about villains. Specifically, who is the main villain? There are a lot of villains in this movie, but we can't know for sure who is really going to be the big boss at the end of this film. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is because, well, there have been three TV spots that have already been shown online. Now, I've seen them all, and each one has a very specific theme. So, the first one, Rethink Your Heroes, talks about, or rather, um, the theme is, is about um, really knowing who you trust. Do you really trust Optimus Prime? Do you really think of him as a hero? I think you should rethink that, because in the last scene, you see him taking down Bumblebee. So, is he really your hero, or is he really the hero that you think he is? He looks kind of like a villain. Now, in the second TV spot, it's called Keep Coming. And this is, this, the theme of it is about the, the two worlds colliding. And that is, I'm going to call it Cybertron. Cybertron making its way towards Earth. Which, in its own way, is an antagonist in the film. How it's going to play a role in the film, we don't know yet. But it is still a threat, which suggests that it is an antagonist or an antagonizing factor of the film. The third one is called Stay and Fight. And this highlights the humans of the film. And, of course, with more evil threats, they're going to need the help of more humans. So, this leads me to talk about the villains of Transformers last night. Now, before I talk about the villains... It's really interesting to know that we are seeing a film where we're seeing two very, very iconic characters in the Transformers universe come at each other. Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. The two main characters of the last, or rather the first three Transformers films. Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, and Dark of the Moon. Bumblebee and Optimus Prime have always been the two characters that two Autobot characters that have been on the spotlight. Now, does this remind you of other big films? Captain America Civil War. Captain America vs. Iron Man. Batman vs. Superman. Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> the Fate of the Furious. That's the, the seventh installment. No, the eighth installment of the Fast and Furious franchise where we have Dominic Toretto played by Vin Diesel against his entire team. Kind of like Optimus Prime versus Bumblebee and the rest of the Autobots. What is going on here? Why are we seeing this ongoing theme throughout these big movies? <laughs> well, this now leads me to talk about the villains. So I've decided to rank the villains in terms of their order of um, significance from um, the very first ones I'm going to talk about are the least significant villains all the way to number one, the big bad boss who they're going to fight at the very, very end of this, of, this, uh, of this film. So let's just start off with the general Decepticons. The Decepticons in general, okay? So of course we got, um, we got Onslaught. There's Hooligan, who's the Volkswagen van, or Volkswagen bus. And then there's Mohawk, who is the Confederate 61 motorcycle. And then there's Barricade. Barricade seems like he is going to be the most significant out of all of them. Because Bumblebee, I mean, a Barricade is part of the London Chase. Which is a pretty big scene in the, um, in the, um, in the film. So... He's going to play a pretty significant part, and that's his time to shine. 
But at the end of it all, he is still a Decepticon minion. Keyword being minion. Now the next tier up for villains, I'm going to say is Optimus Prime. Because we don't get to see Optimus Prime in a huge chunk of the film. He comes back later on at some point in the movie. But uh, his role, I don't know how big it really is in this film. But all we get to know is really the fact that he is evil, he comes back to Earth, and he has a showdown with Bumblebee. And I'm not sure who else. Maybe some other Autobots. Maybe Optimus is responsible for Hound being severely injured or dying. Well, that would really, really suck. But we did see, or rather saw, a behind-the-scenes shot which suggests that Hound could be severely injured. But anyways, I'm not going to go in that direction. I just want to uh, talk about how Optimus is one of the villains, or at least one of the antagonists in the film. But I think a bigger antagonist in this film is actually Megatron. The reason why I say that is because Megatron is also another character who is, um, he's not going to show up for a huge chunk of the film. He's just going to show up when the time is right. He's going to follow along the same tradition that he's had in the last four films. And that is standing along the sidelines and then showing up when the time is right. But I think that his role in this film is actually going to be the biggest role compared to the last four times that he's shown up. Think about it. He's got a whole new look. He's got this giant weapon. He even has a scene where he's having a conversation with Captain Lennox. What does that mean? He has a scene where he's walking through the battlefield after the battle has taken place. So there is, there is some significant to his character. And to top things off, there's a theory, or at least there is some suggestion going on that there is could possibly be a struggle for a power struggle or something going on because in that scene where Isabella Moner is standing in front of these explosions going off it looks like some of the Decepticons are tackling Megatron we don't know for sure that's not 100% confirmed we can only um, we can only uh, uh, believe in that because of what this close-up of the screenshot from the trailer tells us I can't even be completely sure that that's Megatron, but something is going on there and it looks like a big fight. Anyways, it looks like that Captain Lennox in this scene has to talk to Megatron, negotiate somehow, and maybe Megatron is the one that actually takes down Optimus Prime. It makes sense. I mean, who can really, who else can really take down Optimus Prime? I foresee, or rather I see Optimus Prime taking out every single one of the Autobots, if they were put in a fight, theoretically, okay? He's just that powerful. But who can beat um, Optimus Prime? Well, Megatron has beaten him in the past. He can beat him again. But they need to do that because Optimus Prime has gone rogue. Freaking Rogue One. <laughs> like, he is, he, is the, he is the one member of the Autobot that's gone rogue, and I can't think of anybody else to take him down other than Megatron. Is Megatron the main villain? I don't think so. I think he plays a significant part as an antagonist, but I think he's going to do what he did in the previous four films, and that is make it through the rest of the film so that he can appear in another film. I don't think his time has come up yet. I think he still has more time before the his ultimate demise. But in any case... I think he's going to move on and live on because his story, which is part, uh, uh, you know, his story actually still has something to do with the Unicron story, which we're going to see later on in the future Transformers sequels. So I don't think that he's the main villain. The main villain, in my opinion, is the big bad villain that comes from underwater. It's the one that's awoken from underwater. And there's a number of reasons why I believe this. And that is because, well, Michael Bay... You know, he wants to go out with a bang. This is his last film. He's incorporating a lot of huge concepts and elements into this film. Such as Dinobots, potential Dinobot combiners, the return of Cybertron coming back from outer space, space bridges in the form of Stonehenge. You know, more Cybertronians and a lot and a lot of supercars. Specifically, 
European supercars. So, you know, he's going on with a bang. There's a lot going on here. And I think that he wants to make his villain to be very, very, very big. And it's going to be awoken from underwater. Because how in the heck do you make this a robot in disguise out in the open when it's so freaking huge? Well, it's got to be hidden underwater. So I think that while the Decepticons are villains, they are not the main villains. They're the ones that are going to be taken out very, very easily by Autobots and TRF. But they're definitely not the main villains. Optimus Prime, he is a villain. But he's a villain that's most likely going to be beaten by Megatron. Megatron beat him again. He'll beat him. Uh, he beat him before. He'll beat him again. The big bad villain is that thing that's coming from underwater. And they're going to need the help of the Dinobots to take this guy out. Now, we don't even know for sure if they we're going to have Dinobot combiners. It's just could be like a gimmicky toy thing that's had that Hasbro's offering. But the fact is that Dinobots are back. And... They're back because they need them. Reinforcements. I mean, that's what they're there for in Age of Extinction. Maybe they're back again because they once again need reinforcements. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of Autobots there. I mean, you got the main Autobot team and then you got the European Autobot team. And, you know, it just really tells you that there's a really big bad threat. And I'm just theorizing here. I think that... Um, What's going to happen is that, you know, at some point during the Barricade and Bumblebee chase, I'm going to call it the London chase, the thing gets woken up right by London Bridge and they, uh, the, the Autobots work, are working together to lead this big bad villain out of the city of London and, in, and onto uh, the fields uh, where Stonehenge is. So it's going to be one big chase that takes the big bad guy, let's call him Bruticus, okay, or Predaking. Let's call him Predaking. King, okay? No, let's call him Bruticus. <laughs> there is a big chase. I'm going to call it the London chase where the Autobots have to lead Bruticus out of the water, out of London, and into a field where there's no civilians and bring him to Stonehenge where the space bridge is. That's what I think is going to happen. And that's going to be the climactic finale of Transformers of Last Night. And then we'll see what happens after that. But, like I said before... The big question is, who's the big bad villain? I'm going to say that it's going to be Bruticus. I'm not going to say that it's like Bruticus, like for sure, as in like they're going to use that name. But I'm going to say that it's the thing that's from underwater. I don't think that the big fight, the boss fight, is going to be between Optimus and Megatron. It's going to be between the Autobots and Bruticus. Or whatever you want to call him. The big bad guy. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the big fight. Because before, I mean, let's look at the villains in the past. We've seen Optimus versus um, Autobots versus Decepticons, okay? In the first one. And, and uh, it wasn't in, even really a fight between Optimus and Megatron. So I'm not even going to say it's Optimus versus Megatron. It was Opt Autobots versus Decepticons. In Revenge of the Fallen, it was Optimus versus the Fallen. Okay, not even Megatron. Megatron was, was a, a battle that took place in the forest fight, which was in the middle of the movie. In Dark of the Moon, it was Sentinel Prime. Not even Megatron, once again. In Age of Extinction, it was Lockdown. There was a fight between Optimus and Galvatron, but that was, like, very, very minor. Afterwards, Galvatron just, like, he just, like, walked off. He, like, just, like, went off somewhere else, right? So this is that moment where Optimus and Megatron can really have their fight, but it's not a fight in what you think it is. It's not the type of fight that you think it is between hero and villain. It's villain versus hero, not hero versus villain, okay? It's going to be a very, very interesting fight. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure how it's going to go, but this has got to be the most interesting story that they've come up with for a Transformers live action film and something I'm very very excited about thanks to the uh, the the writers the talented writers at the writers room anyways that's all I got to say in this video what do you guys think is going to happen in the final battle um, like I said before London Chase is going to lead the big bad villain code name Bruticus all the way to Stonehenge you're going to turn on the space bridge and something's going to happen that's where the big big fight is going to take place Dinobots are going to come out. It's going to be great. Um, so what do you think is going to happen? Let me know in the comments section below. And that's all I got to say in this episode. There's going to be a lot more to talk about. So make sure you subscribe. Anyways, speak, speaking of subscribing, we've made it to 80,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all your support. We're on the road to 100K. 
Show me some support by subscribing. I really, really appreciate that. Speaking of subscribing, I would like to thank every single one of you who have subscribed to the A3U Review, youtube.com slash A3U Review. That's where me and Boris, we do reviews of Transformers from Hasbro to Kara and also third-party Transformers. Show us some support. And if you have supported, or rather, if you have subscribed to the A3 review, um, let me know. Let me know by going to the latest episode of the A3 review. That's episode six. Type it in the comment section, Ragin' Nation, standing by. Okay? If you type in Ragin' Nation, standing by, on episode six of the A3 review, we're going to give 10 random shoutouts on episode 7 of the A3 review. So type in Raging Nation standing by on the episode 6 of the A3 review, season 8. Okay? So thank you so much for your subscriptions. We really appreciate it. Um, we're on our way to 10K. Help us get there. All right? The last thing I want to um, uh, mention is uh, my friend. 2011 Sideswipe, he's put out a really, really great video about the origins of Optimus Prime and Megatron. Check out that video. I'm going to leave you a link in the description box below. It's something that is worth checking out because it's a very, very comprehensive video. And I think you should check it out. Subscribe and also leave a comment on that video. All right, so there you have it. Which side are you on? Team B or Team Prime? Let me know in the comments section below. And there you have it. That's all I got to say in this episode. As always, if you enjoyed these videos and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Alex. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Things like that. They're using these terminology in, in replacement of the actual characters' names because they don't want to give it away. But we will know about them soon when Toy 